From being coined as one of the best devices of 2016 to one of the most explosive, the Note 7 has definitely caused a stir in the tech community. So in this video, I'm going to give you my personal opinion of it. And despite its hazardous flaws, we're going to see if it's still worth the investment. There's only one way to find out. So let's talk. Simple. And yet you are seeing the results of many, many years of coordinated effort in research, engineering and operating experience. <laughs> So the Note 7 sports that kind of design that definitely warrants a second look. From its glass exterior that wraps around the entire device to its bezel-free edge that allows the screen to spill into the back of the device, the Note 7 totes one of the most unique, if not the best design I have ever seen. It's that type of device that you just pick up in amazement. You hold it for no reason, just to enjoy simply how it feels in hand. And don't act like you've never had that kind of moment. I know I'm not the only one that will do this. Now you'll find that it's offered in a few different color options that include gold, silver, black onyx, and a new color option, blue coral, which did look better in person than I anticipated, but I really like the fact that the device is slender enough to comfortably use with one hand. I was quite impressed and amazed as I thought it would be much more difficult, but this advantage here is largely due to the device not being as wide as its competitors who sport the same screen size. So pretty much I can use the Note 7 and comfortably reach just about any corner a lot easier than I could with something per se like my iPhone 6s Plus. And the keyboard is a bit taller, which is nice as it reduces the number of errors I have to correct. Now, although the device is made of glass, due to its brilliant choice and design of curved edges in addition to having a slimmer build, I was able to actually enjoy using a phablet. And not just for its features, but for its comfort in hand as well. With this one, you at least won't find it slipping from your grip as many of us did with the S7. At least I did, because that was like my major gripe about the S7. But I didn't find that issue with the Note 7. I could use it with or without a case. Now, all the buttons were easy to access with the volume button buttons being along the left hand side and the power button on the opposing side placed in the idle spot as is low enough for your thumb to comfortably and easily reach. Along the bottom you're going to find your headphone port, USB-C charging port, microphone, speaker, and a newly designed S Pen. But along the top you'll notice there is now a tray for your SD card so you can add on additional storage space if needed. A classic feature that many users love, but it's currently not offered on a lot of devices, so it's nice to see it on the Galaxy Note 7. And it's also nice to see that the base model is 64 gigabytes, so even out the box you have tons of storage space to enjoy. So what about that S Pen? It's pretty much another aspect of the Note 7 that just sets it apart from other phablet devices because I want to say it's probably the only one, if not one of the very few, who do bundle a stylus into a phone like this. And the stylus activates some really cool and useful features, like the ability to jot a note when the screen is off with the push to eject design. Now I personally love this feature because it came in handy, especially when I was really pressed for time. Instead of having to fire up an application or even hunt for one, I was able to just pop out the S Pen and write it down on my screen. The S Pen also packs other other handy options such as the ability to perform actions that include smart select where you can grab a quick screenshot of a selected area or create a gif and animate a message onto it now this was a major key for me because i love using gifs in my messages and it's nice that i can now just create one whenever i feel inspired to do so you also have the option to translate the text you're looking at into another language and magnify specific areas of your screen and even launch your favorite app all with this little pen or you can just pull your favorite apps from the edge of the screen with the built-in edge feature. And this is configurable so you can add, remove, edit, and even download widgets that you might be interested in. So the S Pen is one of those things that some may even venture to call gimmicky while others find it quite useful. But it wasn't the first way that I would find myself interacting with my phone. I would still use my finger as normal to do whatever I needed to. The S Pen would be like an afterthought. It was just more so something that I would use for a very specific purpose, like to take a note or annotate something where my finger just simply wouldn't be accurate enough. So pretty much if it wasn't there, I'd survive. It's not a must have feature for me, but it definitely proved useful when I did reach for it. Now you'll find that the Note 7 packs a ton of features that can definitely keep you busy and away from becoming bored with things. And one of the most talked about features is the iris scanner. Within less than a minute and maybe even less than 30 seconds, I was able to successfully set up my phone to be unlocked with my eyes and even add a cute little mask to appear when my eyes are being scanned. Now I do wish I didn't have to wake up my device, slide up on the screen and wait as my eyes are recognized, but on the other hand, you can set it up to unlock via iris recognition or fingerprint recognition. Both options are very effective and perform very fast, but if you're wondering if I prefer one over the other, yeah. 
not so much. You know, it was nice to be able to run both at the same time. So I would just use whichever was most convenient in that moment. Now I won't lie, the fingerprint scanner did get used the most between the two, but it was nice to have the option to scan my eyes in the event that I was unable to use my fingers to unlock my device. Another unique cool feature is always on display. So this means that you can basically have a screen that constantly displays the time and notification icons to let you know things that you need to catch up on. Now this was handy and nice to use, especially if you're the type who's always unlocking your phone to either check the time or look at your latest notifications. You can even pin notes to this view so if you need a constant reminder of something, what better place to put it than right in front of your face? And it won't hog your battery for this feature as the Note 7 does pack an AMOLED display. Now while this was cool, it was just a little too distracting for me so I found after a few days of using this feature, I did go back and turn it off and I just used the more traditional way which is the blank black screen. This may be useful for some and maybe I'll try it again later but at the present time, I like the traditional way. But one thing that I could fully appreciate is this screen. It's highly saturated due to the quad HD display which made looking at anything very enjoyable. And with the added bonus that it lacks bezels, the image just appeared to be endless and kind of just pop more. It's like you never know how much better an image could look when it appears almost frameless. And I think you all will also be happy to know that the Note 7 is IP68 water and dust resistant. So this is good to have as you don't have to stress about those random and accidental scenarios where your device may get wet. Now I'm sure all of you or at least some of you have heard the hype surrounding the camera on this thing. And I'm happy to admit it's not just hype. It's facts. The picture the Note 7 is capable of capturing is breathtaking and at times even unbelievable when you discover that it was shot on a cell phone. Colors are bright and vivid and everything is sharp and captivating. Autofocus, our focusing period was super fast and always produced a very pleasing image. Now the app itself is loaded with tons of features like the ability to snap a photo by just saying cheese. And you can also enjoy a wider shot altogether without the addition of a clip on lens to achieve this. And I was actually surprised when I went to take a selfie and discovered that a a lot of the background was actually in my picture. And even in dim lit scenarios, I was able to achieve a decent image, but ultimately I think it did okay. Now the one thing I didn't like though is the record function. And this may be something that's not even, you know, a Note 7 thing and just an Android thing. And that function that I'm speaking of is that when I hit record, it automatically starts recording. When I hit record, I don't want to instantly start recording. I just want to switch to the option to record a video. So although it's like a shortcut, thank you, but no thanks. <laughs> However, in contrast to disliking the shortcut, I do enjoy the clean camera interface and the fact that I can double press the home button from anywhere and launch the camera. Or you can swipe up or down on the screen to flip between your front and rear facing camera as a lot of actions are literally just a swipe away. Now as for video recording, the Note 7 also performed very well here with a decent amount of stabilization during motion with the help of built-in optical stabilization and the ability to shoot in 4K at 30 frames per second. So the quality here was not sacrificed at all. Touch was even got a redesign for the Note 7. The settings menu doesn't seem as cluttered because it now appears to be better organized into categories, making it a bit easier to find what you need. Things are speedy and responsive, allowing you to pretty much zip through everything thanks to the Snapdragon 820 processor comboed with four gigs of RAM. And the battery life also fared okay with its 3,500 milliamp battery built inside. While it may not give you days of usage, it can at least power you through the day and on into the night before you have to juice it back up. And even when you do, you have that rapid charge technology which is a beast so you can get back at 100% and good to go in no time. Now like I said earlier the Note 7 is packed with a lot of features like secret folders to privately store things without the need of an extra app to do so and it's this long list of features that I like about it and then at the same time kind of dislike about it. Call me crazy but there is such a thing as being overwhelmed with too many options but it's not enough to deter me from recommending this device to you. However, Purchasing one of these at this time is something I would caution you about because if you're not aware, they are currently under a recall due to random devices exploding. So it's just something to think about if you are interested in purchasing one. And it's these reasons that kind of left me at odds with the Galaxy Note 7. It's an awesome phone. It has a gorgeous design, a beautiful screen with a plethora of options to enjoy about it. Like I could actually see myself using this phone as my daily driver and being satisfied with it. But the current explosive warning label on this thing, it has me really leery 
to use it at all. So you're kind of using it at your own risk until you get your device swapped out for one that is safe to use. So with that said, definitely consider all the pros and cons if you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself. But before you dip on out of here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you can be notified when I drop another video. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.